This is a Culture Inject production. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Part of Us and Invoke Fancast. As you can see, I am by myself, but that is because we have a very, very, very special episode coming at you because I am sitting down with the incomparable and the and the awesome Frank Gasson Jr. Thank you so much, sir, for being here with us. How are you doing? I'm great, man, and I'm glad to be here. You know, I love me some in Vogue, you know? Yes. They start my career, shoot. <laughs> yes. We, as you, as you know, we, this podcast is for in Vogue super fans. Every episode literally is talking about in Vogue, breaking down and deconstructing everything. A brand that you uh, had a hand in, like, creating and making them this international super group. And, and part of your creativity is the reason why we love them so much. So I'm happy to be able to sit down with you. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. We're going to kind of start off with just, just you as an individual. You've literally had an amazing career. Uh, you work with like some of the top artists and it spans multiple eras. Um, and you even touched stages before you started as, you know, with In Vogue and everything. Like you've been at, with halftime, uh, with Super Bowl, performing with your alma mater, being up with the people. If you were not doing this, What would be, well, as a creative, they always say have a plan B, (laughs) you know, Um, because for everybody, it doesn't always work out that way. So if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? Wow. I I think that's easy to answer if I just tell you a little story, you know, about Mm -hmm. how all this came about. Yeah. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know that, right? Yes. And and I graduated a long time ago uh, from high school. But when I was in high school, my my teacher took us to Broadway to see The Wiz. Not The Wiz, the movie, The Wiz with Stephanie Mills and Hinton Battle and Mabel King and even Felicia Rashad, I think, was a munchkin, believe it or not, in that Wiz. Wow. It was on Broadway, George Faze, on choreographic, Joffrey Holder directed it. And it changed my life. You know, basically the monkeys, uh, they, I, I don't know if you're supposed to say the underlings or the monkeys, but I remember them as the funky monkeys, okay? Uh-huh. And these guys came across stage doing these stag leaps, you know, like stag leaps, like you're jumping like in four position like that. And I was like, wow, they were like, in the, they were high in the air. And I was like, wow, I want to do that. Now, coming from Milwaukee, you don't know the guys dance that professional. You've seen some street dancing. I used to bop with my sister. Mm-hmm. But just put my mind to see how athletic they were. And so right then and there, it changed my life. So I come back to Milwaukee. My dad wants me to go to high, I mean, college and be a lawyer. And so I went to the University of Wisconsin in Madison and, uh, you know, I'm going to be a lawyer. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a lawyer. You know, uh, that's what he wants me to do. And I majored in political science. I, I pledged Alpha Phi Alpha. Didn't realize when I was doing the Alpha. The black and gold. That, <laughs> that, was, that was choreography. You know, I was really... Yeah good at it. You know, I could step really well and I, you know, and probably because I had seen those monkey monkeys, you know, and I like to dance and I like Fred Astaire and I like Gene Kelly and I like all those big musicals. So still not thinking I can make a career of it. You know, I can't make a career of this. That's for some kind of chosen people. So I, I you know how you major in college, you have to take a language requirement. I took Swedish. Okay. Oh, wow. I took Swedish because because I recognized the words. The words like at school meant a chair at Hoos meant a house. So the words were very familiar to me as far as English. And so I, I, can, I can pass this. I ain't got to take Spanish. I ain't got to take French. And I took that. And then I graduated from college, walking downtown Milwaukee, getting ready to go to law school. I'm sad. I want to be in show business. Something like a spirit took me into this auditorium and, and I walked in. And there was a hundred kids dancing on stage. They were black, white from every part of the world. And I was just in the back watching. And this girl came up to me who was, I guess, working with the, the group which was up with people, mm-hmm. not up the people, up with people. Up, up, with, people. up with people. Okay. <laughs> up with people. And, uh, and, and, you know, I didn't know what they were and they were doing all these dances like Spanish dancing, country dancing, uh, uh, jitterbugging, t- Charleston, all kind of movement. And mm-hmm. she came back to me and she said she was from Sweden. I said, that's the data Fasca E university them all. And she said, wow. Yeah. But I had to do, she said, y'all had to, I said, y'all had to, you know, we just started speaking. 
Because uh-huh. I was the language. I was first out of college. I had passed, so, you know, I think I'd take five semesters of it or something. And so I was kind of fluent in it. And so she just tripped and laughed and I laughed. And right then and there, she interviewed me to be in that group. And I went around traveling around the world with up with people. And I did the Super Bowls, have times with up with people. And then I and then I met him all. Okay, and I but, but I did Michael Jackson's New Criminal before that happened. So but that so that just shows you, I guess if I wasn't doing this, maybe I I would be a lawyer. Maybe. Maybe you'd be teaching Swedish. Who knows? <laughs> you know? I don't think so. <laughs> but, uh, but I know I would have, you know, and then it's, I even want to rewind a little more. I think about the fact that I moved to Milwaukee in 61 and my mother didn't want to, us to grow up in the South. It was like really the woods, you know, and 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 if I stayed down South, what would what, what I be doing? Would I be chopping wood or something? Or would I have gone to one of the black universities? You don't know. But right. my destiny led me to Milwaukee, which thus led me to Broadway to see the Wiz, thus left me to go to uh, L.A., audition for Smooth Criminal, and then meet in Vogue. No, I'm missing why I met in Vogue. Cindy Heron was in a pageant. And mm-hmm. this is my name, Cheryl Cobb, who told me that move to New York, move out of New York. I was in New York for a minute, too. She had a pageant and Cindy won the pageant. And Cindy remembers me choreographing the pageant. And she convinced in Vogue to work with me. Oh, wow. You know, and they really didn't want to work with us because, you know, shout out to Lavelle and Travis, because, um, we weren't as big time as Michael Peters, Lester Wilson. It was a lot of big time choreographers that uh, Invoke had interviewed. But we said, let us do it for free. You know, and and, and then and then if you like it, then pay us. And they loved my love and never going to get it. And then, you know, I think one, that's one of the awards right there. <laughs> we we all did. So what what drew you to want to create a direct for them? Like, because I, I you came in for their second album, correct? Yeah, we came in doing the first album. Doing the first album. We we didn't do a Hold On, though. Hold On okay. was Carla Earl and them and, and Keith, I think. I forget, Sharon Farrell and them. They choreographed that, which is incredible choreography. So so yeah. good to see that choreography. Now, we have, we've changed Hold On a lot of ways. But that year, we went on to start working with them that year. And, it, and I guess it was after I had performed with Involve on the Soul Train Awards, I was Cindy's partner as a dancer. I don't know if you saw that before. Yes. Remember? Oh, yeah. yeah. We remember. <laughs> so I was still just a dancer then. And then, as, you know, Cindy still remembers me and thought that because I was so passionate and creative and, and, and I love just doing things like, you know, I had seen Dream Girls 25 times, too. So something about Dream Girls oh, wow. was my, my blueprint to create Involve. Mm-hmm. That's why they both knew how to be ladies. They always beveled. They always knew how to stand on the red carpet. They were really fashion forward. So that's because I had seen Dream Girls 20, 20 something times. I love Dream Girls. They're incredible. Yeah. Girl. You definitely can see remnants of of that inspiration in and evoke, like you, like you said, how they sing, how they perform, their camaraderie together. So it's, it's great how that kind of uh, translates and evolves. And I'm mad I didn't get the Dream Girls movie because I had convinced Usher to be in that movie and I had convinced Beyonce to be in that movie. And shout out to Bill Condon. He didn't give it to my clique because we stayed true to the 60s movement. I think Fatima got that movie. She did get that movie, but they did hip hop. You know, I believed in trying to make it be like another black classic, you know, not to say that hip hop isn't, but that was a 60s piece. And yeah. so we showed off our dance stuff. We were doing stuff that felt very 60s. Mm-hmm. And saying true to that aesthetic. Of exactly. that time period, I, I definitely understand. Step into the bad side on Broadway is incredible. You know, step into the bad side in the movie is just all right because Jamie Foxx wasn't really a dancer. But right. to see Ken Hardy do step into the bad side with Clinton Derricks and all those people was incredible. It was like, and also step into the bad side, believe it or not, inspired Michael Jackson's Dangerous that me and the villain Travis hmm. did. Oh wow! Yeah, people don't know that either. That's a good fun fact. <laughs> oh, and Vogue was supposed to be in that dangerous that was on the American Music Awards in in 1991. Performing as dancers? No, and Vogue was going to be featured as the bad the bad girls that he's talking about, the dangerous girl that he's talking about. It's incredible. I had put together a whole like a uh, creative direction pack with video. I have it somewhere. One day I'm going to show it in my story. And then Vogue was in it. And then, you oh, know, wow. he just went with one girl, but in Vogue was in it. They were the girls. Okay, all these tidbits that get me really excited for as the time progresses. Um, so now my question would be, since you work with Invoke for all these all for all this time, what would be your all time favorite 
live performance of In Vogue? Wow, that's a good question. I would think that when we created the uh, Funky Divas Tour, mm-hmm. to know that the girls weren't these superstars, but we made $2 for like a million dollars. I had a group called New World Order that they let open for them. You know, Travis was in that group, OG, Frank, Tyrone. So it was such a great thing to see how sharing, the, you know, you know, I believe in this term, share the light, sparkle brighter. You ever hear me say that? Yes. Yes. Okay. And what that means, like you're sharing your light with me, I'm sharing my light with you guys, and we can sparkle bright. You can't be selfish. So in Vogue, when we did that Funky Divas tour, they knew I was trying to make a, a, a good looking, talented male group mm-hmm. that could move, dance, and sing. And so as a trade off, we said, okay, let my guys dance for you, but let them open your show. Hmm. Okay. So everything about that, I put all my heart into that. You know, the girls, you know, really understood direction. They were professional. They, they, they knew how to rehearse. They knew how, what wardrobe was. We had the set with the staircase. You know, we worked on that show so hard. And when it went out there, it was people were just so amazed by it. Look at these girls show. You know, we, we, I feel like I, I brought Broadway to them. Like Cindy tapped in it. Travis opened it in a, a suit where he could do modern and ballet. And Vogue was just so open to everything. And they were open to things being really professional. You know, I have a saying about a lot of black acts and no disrespect to the church. The church is one thing. But when you do what we're doing, like in Vogue's and the Brandy's and the uh, Beyonce's, it's not church. Right. So sometimes I have this saying, people think I'm being rude. That's the church of God in Christ. Okay. I understand and, what that means completely. Okay, you know, but but the Church of God in Christ is supposed to be forgiving. You're supposed to let people try, but we really have people coming to us to pay. So, in Vogue, saw that I had a group that could really dance well, and 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 it was it was an incredible incredible tour, incredible. I just I just ran across the 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 diagrams of the original set we built for that tour. Oh wow! You know, it was just so amazing to see that stuff. Like you know, I just moved my mom here. And uh, and I got all my life downstairs, and 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 I can tell my story through video, and 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 it's just going to be such an incredible story. So, and then I, I always remember. I hope Terry don't get mad. I would be on the tour bus that tour, and Terry would be mad at me because we made them dance in heels so hard that I would always do a trade off. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll massage your feet after every show, and so <laughs> she helped me to that, you know. And and it was so funny that she really helped me do that. Like, cause you know, heels are hard to dance in. You yeah. Know what I mean, people don't realize that, but that's why I encourage people to take ballet. Girls who take ballet know how to dance in heels better than girls who don't take ballet. Right. And, you know, in Vogue, like hmm. in Vogue and Brandy or in Beyonce, we take them through simple ballet stuff just to learn how to stand in heels the right oh, way. Yeah. So now you're returning to your hometown of Milwaukee to help eliminate racism and empower women through a partnership with the YWCA. So, so let me just start at the beginning. I had moved my mom to LA seven years ago. Uh, last year, her friend by the name of Bobby Patterson, a woman who lives in Milwaukee, called me and my sister and basically said to you, bring your mother home. Mm-hmm. And it kind of gets emotional. You know, it's so weird. I want to cry every time I think about it. My response, like, you know, it, it's like, it's, it's like, when you hear somebody say, bring your mother home, it's like almost they're saying, bring the body home. Mm-hmm. So that's how it sounded to me when she said it. But, but luckily my mother's alive. And, 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 and so we, we found out my mother wasn't happening in LA. She, she just wasn't. And, and she wanted to come back to Milwaukee. So last year, April, we, we bring her back to Milwaukee. This year, April, I'm here in Milwaukee just visiting, trying to help her with some stuff she needs to be helped with, with the house. And, um, and this lady by the name of Tracy Williams, this lady by the name of Tracy Williams brought me to Madison, Wisconsin about six years ago to honor me. And I stayed in contact with her. And she's, she, she calls me one night. I'm on my way to Utah to do a movie with Brandy, a Christmas movie. She, she, she called me to come see this building. And I'm like, you know how you, you like, it's, it's kind of like you, if you say, Frank, come see this building. And I'm only doing it because I want to be nice. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing it because I want to see this building. I ain't got time to see this building. I got a seven o'clock flight to Utah and I'm excited to go do this movie with Brandy, you know, this Christmas movie. And I'm so happy she called me to do it. So I'm excited to leave Milwaukee and get to Utah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I go see the building. And, 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 and Tracy Williams is not there. She's the new CEO of the building. She, had, she just became the CEO in January of this year. And, and so she wasn't there, but there was a lady by the name of Sheila Mayhorn that was there that runs the building. And she, I toured this building with her for an hour and a half. 
70,000 square feet. When I finished that tour, like it's like something called me. Said to, I said to myself, I know what to do with this building. It's just like that. This building that's probably being utilized, maybe 30% of it, not even the 70,000 square feet. It's a block long. Oh, wow. And just like that, I said, you know, okay. And one thing that I have to say too, that's a trip. So while, while I was visiting in Milwaukee, of course, I would go check out my old friends that I had grew up with. And we would go to some clubs, local clubs around just to have drinks. And, and I noticed on the doors of the, of the Milwaukee clubs, you have to be 30 to get in. Did you hear me? Yeah, 30. <laughs> yes. So I, I was amazed. But when I saw it, it reminded me of, it must have felt like it. if I was under 30, now I, I kind of felt like what it might have felt to say no colors a lot, a lot, a lot. That's what the sign reminded me of. But it was these clubs, not all the clubs, just certain clubs in Milwaukee, mostly black. They don't cater to the people 18 to 30. So I'm asking my friends, yeah, they, they come in and they do all this stupid stuff. They shoot the clubs up. So we just don't want them in there. I said, that don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. And they were like, yes, it does. How do you, how, why, why I want to party with somebody under 30 anyway? Because my nephew's under 30 and I party with him and, and, and we good. And also the legal age is 21. We all can't wait to get 21 so we can go have a drink legally and not use a fake ID. Well, they, they, you just don't know, Frank, you ain't been there. We had the duck under the table. I said, I don't care what you say. That is stupid. Okay. That is stupid. So, and they were like, cause my whole thing was, okay, if there are bad ones, vet the ones that are good. And give him a special car, but he can come in so I can go to cover my 25 year old nephew and have a beer. Right. But they gave up on everybody. So that's in the back of my head. The 70,000 square foot is in, in the, I'm thinking about the Millennium Dance Complex in LA, where it's thousands of kids, black, white, yellow. They come there and they just, there's no racism. They're building bridges of understanding. They're, they're empowering women. They're eliminating racism. And, and like all it just came to me. It was like, I can bring all my friends here to show them how to sing. I can open a recording studio in this place. I can teach a young girl seven years old who ball- ballet. If they take ballet, they're going to wear their hair better. They're not going to have the crazy eyelashes on. They're not going to have the lace fronts on that are bad. They're going to have the lace fronts that are good because ballet teaches young women how to be better. It teaches them how to hold their hands, head up. They will never leave the club with some shoes in their hand because they know how to get the club right. And then if a man treats the room, they're a bop man. You know what a bop man is? It's a kick. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a nice, pretty kick that the Rockettes do. Okay. So every ballet dancer I met like Ashley and Jasmine Harpers, there's something so sophisticated about those women. If I had a daughter, I'm going to put them in a the ballet class, not to become a ballet dancer, just to teach them this poise that comes from it. So yeah. I, just like that, all this stuff came to me, telling me this is what you should do with this building. Tracy asked, asked you what to do. Let's tell her this. And I said, Tracy, I know exactly what to do. So I get to Utah the next morning. I tell Brandy about it. She says, Frank, that's genius. I'll help. That's what she said. And that was April. Then June, Brandy came here with me. We met with 300 people in the board of directors and, and told this concept we wanted to do. I even just randomly said, Are there any ballet girls in the audience who ever taken ballet? The two girls came on my stage. I told them to do fifth position. I told them to stand. And then, and then the YWC people, some people got mad at me because I kind of said what I said. I said, you know, look how wonderful these women stand. Isn't this wacky material? So I guess that was chauvinistic. I guess that's why you got mad. I don't know. But I was just, I, I just know that men like wifey material. Right. So for me, I think wifey material is a certain kind of woman. Does that make sense? It you makes know? sense. And, and, and I think if that's, if, if anything is to empower women, why not show them how to dress? Maybe somebody wants to be a stylist. Maybe somebody wants to record. But, but, but all this, and also we have in Milwaukee called the Kia Boys. You ever heard of that? I haven't. Okay. You got to look it up. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, there are boys aged 13 to 17 that still, they still Kias with a USB cord. The Kia. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. And they stole almost 14,000 of them here. It's a big epidemic. So what better way to help some young people that I can make them so tired by TikTok and dancing, rapping, singing, maybe being a video director, maybe being an engineer in the studio, maybe being a songwriter. I can do that in this facility that right. Tracy has give, gave me the green light on. And, and, this, and, the, and the center is going to be called the Intergenerational Performing Arts and Athletic Center. Now, why is, is athletics on there? Because also in June, 
Tracy, not June, August, Tracy brought the University of Wisconsin Madison basketball team, women and male basketball team, for me to sell my campaign about football players and, and basketball players should take dance. I played basketball when I was younger in college mm-hmm. and high school, and my knees still work at 105, and and it's because of the proper training of how to jump and land. Mm-hmm. If, if you ever see Jordan on the Nike thing and he's jumping like that, that is a dance move. That's a jeté, you know. But also, when you play defense with basketball, they always teach you to watch the waist. Wherever the guy go with the waist. His body's going to go. And if you cross, he's gone to the hoop. So in dance, we know when you jump, you get your waist in there, your hips in the air. So right. it's all these things. But I think a lot of people, like guys especially, they discriminate against dance because they think it's effeminate or something. Right. Okay. But I have to say to that, you know, it's not even about sexuality what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fact that a lot of guys start to dance like girls because there's nothing but girls in class. Luckily, I got to go to all men's classes when I went to Alvin Ailey. So I would love to show guys that it doesn't make you wimpy because you're learning how to dance and stretch the correct way and jump. And, and, and TikTok is making guys dance. And dance is very a, a very lucrative business. I actually ever can make anywhere from $200,000 to $300,000 a year dancing with someone like Brandy or Beyonce yeah. okay, on, on a tour. So I was called to this like I've never been called to anything in my life. And so therefore... Uh, I'm getting ready to go to University of Wisconsin to teach them some dance steps to make the ball playing better, which is amazing. Dance technique, not steps, dance technique. Mm-hmm. And also, we're doing this gala. So let's get to. So you see how that story is important? Yeah. This about? So I figured, OK, if I'm going to get this facility, this building renovated, I got to do a fundraiser to do so. So let me get my friends from Hollywood to come to Milwaukee. We show the rendering of the new building. But I show them what I do. I know what a good show is. I know what great lights are. I know a great sound. I know great staging. I know that you got to have a wonderful venue. I know that you have to have the sound mix. You can't have that Church of God in Christ mic with the chrome head. It looks cheap. You have to have a beautiful mic like a Beyonce has a Sennheiser. Yeah. Okay. Like when you, somebody's looking at you the whole time. You got a mic that looks like it's from the, the church down the street's microphone. So my my aesthetic is so it's not uppity. It's just it's just that I know I am I'm blessed to be in a professional business, and we need to always bring it. And so I'm getting ready to bring it in in, in the Frank Gatson way because of all the information I learned on December 28th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at the Performing Arts Center that sees 2,000 people, and I got Leandria, I got In Vogue, I got Brandy, I got Luke James, I got Shante Moore, I got the Tappers from Vegas, uh, Sean and John, I got this guy named Brandon who's an incredible dancer that used to be with Complexion. I got a young girl who's only 17, Dakota, who's on point. Because she took dance class when I met her 10 years ago. And she's this beautiful woman who's ex- epitomizes an example of what I'm talking about. I have this artist named Tiffany Savant, who's really just interesting and clean and, and wonderful. And I've got Major, who's going to open the show with 100 Milwaukee young people. So I've been rehearsing them for the three days. And people say, well, how do you get all these young people from these different cliques here? I don't know. Maybe they think I'm somebody. Maybe that's it, you know. But they're in the room working their butts off. It is just the most magical moment of my life. It's better than anything I've ever done with Invo, anything I've done with any of these artists. And I love Invo, but yeah. Invo is coming. Yes, they are. <laughs> but it's, it's the impact. It's, it's about the impact. Like you, the, this entire movement is going to impact so many young people and just continue the legacy of, of, of this industry that you've been blessed to work in. Right. So if people, if people wanted to donate, is there a way for them to do so? Yeah, please donate, you know, because, you know, we need the money to do this. OK, it's so easy, but people don't hear me. You know, you know, you know, it's really depressing. You, you see how real I, I like to keep stuff, right? I yeah. think I like to keep it really real. And I hope I'm not upsetting anybody because I'm not in church with, when I'm in show business. Mm-hmm. I'm not in high school when I'm in show business. I am in really I'm really in show business. OK, period. OK, just like athletes, you can't say to the athlete, OK, it's OK that you missed a free throw. OK, go over there and sit down, please. It's OK, good. Don't don't you know, maybe you, you need to go eat something. Why you miss that free throw? Why? That's who I am with, with yeah. what I do in show business. I don't ever. And I always tell people, do not do not mix up the show business, Frank Gatson, with the personal Frank Gatson. If we're sitting at a dinner and I disrespect you some kind of way by being loud, slap me. 
But I don't even mean to disrespect you when we're in rehearsal. It's just that it comes out very aggressive and very passionate. And so I'm, I'm so misunderstood because of that. It just makes me so upset. And, and I never take it personal. So don't you ever take it personal. So. Yeah. So I lost my train of thought. I was giving I, I was giving to a point about we were talking we were talking about how people can donate to oh, thank you that's important oh my god that's so important <laughs> oh Jesus <laughs> I just had to explain that so I'm going to this real I knew there was an example I was going to make so many of my friends I have sent this I support the mission dot org and they say they donate yeah, they can donate a dollar five dollars. And I go, I get this readout every week of everybody who did it. The first week, it was five people. It was shout out to my barber here in Milwaukee. He had done it way back in November 18th. You can do something as simple. I, I, I did an uh, Instagram yesterday and I said to all my friends and all my celebrity friends, please um, do a video. Say, hey, hey, Milwaukee, I support the mission. That's all. I have the shout out tweet from next. He saw, he saw that a week ago, and I got a video from him right away. So it's so interesting when I tell you this information about tickets and how to support the mission. It's easy. I support the mission.org. Click on donate. It's real legitimate. It is nonprofit. Or click on tickets. It's real legitimate. It's even on Ticketmaster. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and do something because this is not about Frank. Frank doesn't need the money. Frank just should go sit his ass down somewhere. But for something, call me to this. Yeah, it is the weirdest thing, you know. It's bigger than me, you know. It's God, I guess, of course, but but it's bigger than anything I've ever done. And people say, "Well, you're tripping. This ain't bigger than anything." What about working with Beyonce? Okay, yes, it's bigger because Beyonce and them are rich, and I'm not. Okay, <laughs> but I'm gonna be rich because the the, the the feeling I get when I these kids come say thank you Mr. Guy it broke my mind it's worth more than any money I ever made in my life so 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 think about the juxtaposition of it okay I work with all these artists they become very rich and I, I'm not hating on that at all I, I love that that I was able to help them get that but isn't it going to be a little more valuable to help keep some young people out of trouble I mean, you compared it to you compared it to like how like a pastor when he gets called to preach. It's like I feel like what you're doing can also be considered ministry because of how it's impacting people. Because I'm not that holy, though. (laughs) But it's but it's still it's effective and it's and it's your heart and it's authentic. And and everything that you've done throughout your career has led up to you being able to impart into these kids the way that you do. I think that's ministry. One hundred percent. Yeah. But I, but you know, I got to shout out Brandy again for coming here and helping me because you know she helped. You know why? Because she's a star. Yeah. And those people, I, I you know, they were just just loving her being here. And you know, and uh, and 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 and, and, and there's other people I need to call on. Shout out, shout out to Tyrese for doing a, a live with me the other day, mm-hmm. and you know, and and he helped a lot with that. You know, it's just been it's just, it, everything. It's just been so. Great. You know, and the reason I need people to donate, I, I like to keep stuff real. Like I said, like I was trying to get Delta or American or somebody to help with the flights, but I have, I got a shout out who did help. And y'all don't be hating. Spirit Airlines did help. Okay. But I, I can't fly, you know, these superstars on Spirit Airlines. So I love Spirit. I know that whole thing. You want to go cheap and you got your toothbrush and your drawers, you, you can go cheap. But if right. you got a bag, that's what's going to make the ticket more. Shout out to Spirit. So, 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 so the reason I need help with donations is because buying those tickets, those first class tickets, mm-hmm. it's kind of broke my budget. And I'm keeping it real. Mm-hmm. Well, if you can help with anything. Please do that. It, it, you know, if you can buy some tickets for somebody, for people, and I know we can put the tickets that we'll call, say, I want to buy 10 tickets for the kids in the community. You can do that. You know, uh, I want to sell that place out, bro. Yeah. You know, and I know I got a good show. I I, I, I want to say I've never been conceited about what I do. I don't know if it's a great show, but I know I have a lot of great acts coming. Okay, yeah. they all can blow. You know, Brandy. You know, I don't know what song she's gonna do. I don't know what song Shantae's gonna do. I don't know what Embo is gonna do. You know, I, I wish Embo would do a medley because they got so many hits. I wish Brandy would do a medley because, <laughs> you know, you know, but, but you know, but it's not that kind of show. It's a show that we're honoring like seventeen people of the community. We even, you know, how you know how at an award show they have the audience. I mean, the uh, Aretha Franklin Award. Mm-hmm. There's two women who shaped my life back here, who are the ultimate empowered women, named Sarah Grant 
and Arnie Skorowski. Those are the two ladies that took me to the Wiz. It's so ironic how I'm going to have an award. We're giving it to this woman named Phyllis Smith, and we're giving it to Dr. Carrington. We're giving Phyllis, Phyllis Smith the, the, the Arnie Skorowski Legend Award. Okay? Oh, wow. And then we're giving to uh, Dr. Carrington and his wife, Tanzanika, and he and, and Dr. Carrington, it's just it's just so much, man. Dr. Carrington passed away. Now, do you know I got mad that he passed away? Just so insensitive because he was he's a part. He was becoming he's becoming, he's he's going to be a partner with me to use his facility with the pool and the gym and all that stuff. But but God says something else. You honor this man, Frank, okay, and you honor his wife. You know, so it made me think different. And then all of a sudden, I'm honoring this great man who was he. When I heard people, I went to his funeral. And it was so interesting to hear how he was doing what I'm trying to do. He loved the youth. He loved working with them. He worked with the Milwaukee Bucks. And the Milwaukee Bucks uh, whole staff of the Pfizer Forum was in there at his funeral. His wife was incredible. So we're honoring them with the Sarah Grant Legacy Award. Oh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I've never explained it much, this much. And then, and then there's another 13 honorees that are getting what is called the Impact Award. You know, we've got this guy named by the name of Kenneth Lock. If you, if you love God, go listen to his, him preach. It's called Evolved. Oh, Pastor Kenneth Lock. Yeah, the second. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his, his church is called Evolved. Yeah. And he had a sermon called Pregnant with Purpose that I heard one Sunday. And I'm pregnant with purpose. And I'm getting ready to have this. This, I don't know, I'm not having a baby, but I'm having I'm going to labor on this. I'm in labor right now. The delivery is Wednesday, December 28th. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I done had the, the cravings. I done ate too much because my mom and them be cooking all kind of food here. So it's just incredible. You can see, can you feel it? Like how I feel oh, about yeah. this. You know, it's just amazing. You know, I can't explain it. Like, it's, it's like, thank you. Thank you, God, for just letting me see this, you know, and, 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 it, and it's, and it's working. You know, I don't know. And, and I just need help with people either donating or showing up to the show, Milwaukee. Well, right. you in Chicago. Y'all are an hour and a half away, Chicago. Come on down. Kenosha, Racine, well, you know, uh, Detroit. You know, that's about four hours. But still, if you can go, if you can go across Lake Michigan, it's probably about two hours. If you can drive across it. <laughs> so who will, who will have access to the facility? Will it just be open to the public? Or- okay. It's, it's definitely open to the public. Good questions. I love good questions. Okay. Uh, the, once again, why is the center called the, it, okay, so we're still doing the YWCA. Let's go on record mm-hmm. with that. We're still doing their programs they had because the building is big enough to do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. But this is a hub that we're putting inside the YWCA. And hopefully it works so good that every YWCA in the world wants to do it. Okay. Well, yeah. So it's called the Intergenerational Performing Arts and Athletic Center. And so intergenerational, the reason we came up that word, like my mama, I don't know what it is about these older folks that be like, and I got to take my medicine, my high blood pressure pills, you know. And then I'm saying, Mom, just walk. Maybe you can get off that stuff, you know. So that's why I want to have a pool that I can take people to. You understand? Or yeah. just because, you know, 10 minutes of cardio will do a lot for someone who has high blood pressure. And, you know, and then eating everything green, eating everything lean. So yeah. we're, we're partnering up with a place called Food for Health. It's right down the street. And so I want ages... New birth to 107, intergenerational. I'm, I'm here to help my city. And thank you, God, for bringing me back to do so because I have, you, you prepared me for this moment, Lord. Yeah, that's awesome. This is awesome. So what kind of disciplines can people choose from at the center? You know, when, I'm going to email you the iPod brochure. Oh, and nice. Then, but, 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 but just coming out of my mouth, Okay, we have Carl Lewis, who's also on my ambassador. So we've got Carl Lewis, who's an Olympian. We've got Anthony Burrell, who's an Albany dancer who had his own studio. He's, you know, Anthony's congratulations for being a professor at the Boston Conservatory now. And we got Brandy, who's an actress, a Grammy Award winner, the vocal Bible, who can come in there and showcase how to act, how to sing, just all kinds of things. And so, so also Carl, we just want to take the sports element of track, dance, basketball. So he's going to be over there on the sports side of the whole thing. You understand? But also, did you know that for the first time ever, the Olympics is having a dance category? Did you know that? I did not know that. Really? Yeah, in Paris. So I guess when the Olympics come to certain cities, they have the choice to pick something that's not normally in the Olympics. Oh, wow. So they're going to 
Uh, so they're going to have a dance category that's more on the street dance side, though. You know, so I imagine, you know, the young knuckleheads doing stupid stuff here. They like to move around just TikTok stuff. Maybe I can have an Olympic team one day that can compete in the Olympics because I understand what dance is. Yeah. And give dancers an, an opportunity to become Olympians. Yeah. No. And that that hasn't been the case. Or well, even a lot of them become someone like, you know, God rest that brother. So like a Twitch. Twitch yeah. Was incredible dancer who did well with dance opening. You know, I have this saying, hashtag dance is serious business. We have to get the respect. You know, and I'm sorry that man is gone because he's a, yeah, he was a wonderful soul. He lit the room up. But, uh, you know, shout out to his family. You know, all, everybody just, you know, Ellen, I know that must be bad for her. But but Twitch is an example of someone who did well through dance. You understand? So the dance part of the YWCA is going to be really important because I know I'm going to keep them so worked that they ain't got tired to do nothing wrong. They'd be too tired after rehearsals, too tired after class. And then I can just see mothers dropping their young daughters off and feeling good that they're in a class with their hair all pulled up. They, they, they're just safe. We, you know, we want to have viewing decks in the uh, facility where parents can watch the students do class sometimes, and sometimes they can't watch them because they'd be distracting the kids. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, I want a, I, I want a, a grooming department. I even want to teach people how to make up a bed. Hmm. Because people... <laughs> Because it's it's a lost art. People don't make up their beds no more. That's just something that that has to discipline the start of your day to get up, make a bed, brush your teeth, take a shower, say a prayer, whatever, whatever you do that makes you become a more empowered person. One hundred percent. Your day started right. So so I know that sounds stupid to have a class on how to make a bed up, but but just anything etiquette wise, anything sports, you know. It, like I even want to have Pilates classes in there. I want to have, uh, you know, the elliptical machine is really great for people who have bad needs. I want to uh, make people understand the impact can really hurt you. But cardio is is key to heart, to looking great, to just keeping high blood pressure down. Maybe you take diabetes out of your your life, you know, whatever. So so it's going to be very health conscious. What uh, what they, how do you say health is wealth? You know, that's really yeah. key to what I'm trying to do. Uh, but but also, you, you know, you have programs where maybe people learn how to uh, use Pro Tools, you know, how to uh, go into a computer and edit a music video. You know, kids are geniuses on these computers. It seems like the babies come out mm-hmm. knowing how to do stuff on computers more than me. You know, I'd be like, right. you, know, folks, you know, like my, my nephew, you know, hooked up the phone to the thermostat. I was like, wow, you know, I didn't know how to do that. So it's just so many things that... If I think if you keep young people busy, you know, you know this is I, and I want to. I have a new saying too. The old folks need to listen to the young folks, and the young folks need to listen to the old folks. One hundred percent. Okay, that's going to be a driving theme throughout this new facility, the YWCA Intergenerational Center, and the, and, and and for short, you say IPAC, I P A A C. Mm-hmm. Okay, I P A A C. You know, and I didn't come up with that. That was one of the young digital people that were, was on my team to do digital stuff. He says, Frank, you need to make a word that can flow out of people's mouth. And that's when we came up with iPod. So it's just, it's just really great. And it's in its own King Drive. I have to say that King Drive in, in Wisconsin goes right into downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's probably one of the safest King Drives in America, which mm-hmm. we, we were made about. We were really amazed by that because sometimes King Drive gets a bad, bad reputation, you know, and, and that's so weird. We got to fix that all across America. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's just a lot, man. It's just really great, uh, you know. And I appreciate this time we having right now because I, I I've never had this much time to really sit down and explain it. I, I've done some news, I've done some press, but it's always I got a rush. I've done radio, but you have allowed me to just really talk about all things in vogue, all things IPOC, all things crazy as Frank Gatson Jr. You know, so I appreciate that. This entire event in this center it sounds so impactful it's very like the impact award that's why we're giving out the impact exactly oh, I, you know so we ask, um, you know why we're honoring these certain people like Kenneth Lock, Talisha Yancey, Miss Colas, Orlando and, and Tina because all these people I'm honoring are people that if I could take them and put them to one bag or something shake them up I want the facility to be all those people and what they represent in the community yeah, and, and the impact that they've had on the community. Isn't that something? So 
it's just, it's just, I'm, I'm just so excited. I, I can't say, it. I know it seems weird, but I'm, I'm really stressed. You know, I can't take it for granted that everything's going to be perfect. I'm, I'm giving it everything I've got. You know, I, I, I'm on the phone 27th, I mean, seven, seven days a week. And, uh, and it's just, it just, it just feels so great. But you felt that and, and, and that's, and that it just kind of all, uh, it's like that domino effect, like one specific action that leads to a whole bunch of actions. And now we're here today. Well, Mr. Mr. Gasson, I truly, truly thank you so much for this time. You have given so many, so much knowledge and tidbits and great stories. We are excited to be able to give you a platform to continue to talk about IPOC and the impact you're making in, in Milwaukee. And to the viewers, thank you again for listening. I know it's the season of giving, but did you think we were giving you all the tea all at once? You got to save room for that holiday turkey, baby. <laughs> Be sure to look out for the second half of our interview with Frank next season, where we talk a lot more about In Vogue. You're definitely not going to want to miss this. Happy holidays. This episode of Part of Us at Invoke Fancast was researched, written, produced, and edited by Matthew at Culture Inject Productions. The intro and outro music was produced by Wolves and Vincent Tone. We're more than just a podcast. We're a fan community. You can keep up to date on Invoke and chat with other fans by visiting Invoke Craze on Facebook. You can also follow us on YouTube and Instagram at Invoke Craze and Twitter at Part of Us Fancast. Part of us and Invoke Fancast is not endorsed by Invoke, E1 Music, or Invoke Records, and is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Invoke and its names, images, and audio clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of the respective copyright holders.